Welcome to part two of Simple Tools for Brain Surgery. Now that you have learned how to pry the noggin open, let's talk about planting some seeds. Now, what you're going to see is raw footage of interviews done at something called the People's Fair in downtown Denver. This first interview is with the humanist. Now, before the interview began, he told me that he was a former pastor in a mainline Christian denomination. He is now a humanist. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we're just doing interviews. Uh, tell us the name of your booth. And if you would, answer one question for us, okay? And All the right. question is, what happens when you die? Oh, oh, okay? Well, this is uh, a booth of the Humanists of Colorado, and we are a part of the American Humanist Association, which is international in scope, actually. Um, to answer your question, <laughs> we don't know, so it doesn't make any difference to us what happens after we die, but uh, I think that we go to dust. Uh, even the scriptures say we come from dirt and we return to dust, to dirt when we die. Um, I plan to be cremated, so my ashes will become dirt fairly quickly instead of waiting for the worms to destroy my body. What if you are, and you, let's see what he says, shall we? Well, there's a follow-up question to that, of course. Right. And you know the follow-up question would be, what if you're wrong about what you believe? Uh, then that's right. Maybe I'd better join the group so that I'll secure my uh, eternal salvation. No, if, if we are wrong, then it doesn't make any difference. Because as humanists, we feel a responsibility to human life, to the environment, to the world in which we live, because it's the only one we're going to experience here anyway. If there's an afterlife, then it's not in our control, and whatever force there is will, will determine what happens to us. Okay, thanks a lot. If we live a good life, oh, go ahead. You know, if we live a good life and we believe that we do uh, have a, a responsibility to build our own personal ethics and moral morality uh, so we should be acceptable to any eternal force now notice I was ready to leave I'd asked my two questions I said thank you very much what made me stick with this man he kept what he kept talking what specifically did he say that made me stick with this man if you live a what do you mean by Good. Now, you see, one of the benefits of asking good questions is that one question naturally leads to the next. What's your name? Becky. Becky. Now, Becky seemed to be paying attention to me. Okay. She was looking at me. She was nodding. Wasn't nodding off. Okay. <laughs> she was smiling. Okay. She seemed to be paying attention to me. But I couldn't have told you if Becky was thinking about, oh, a polka-dotted Barney on a pink desert or not. Please, Becky, do not think about that. Do not anybody think about that. Everybody's going, I can't get it out of my head. But the minute I ask her a question, what do I have? I have her complete what? Attention. Okay. And she has to do what? Answer the question. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking of the next question to ask her. So Becky, how do you know your name is Becky, Becky? You were named that. And who named you? Our parents. A and your name? Megan. Megan. And Megan, how do you know your name is Megan, Megan? And you can't say parents because Becky already took that answer. <laughs> your birth certificate. Now notice, both Becky and Megan refer referred to a source outside themselves. If we start with ourselves, we can't know much at all, can we? Not even our own names. That's a bit frightening, isn't it? You see, all knowledge is derived from an outside source. What is the only reliable, authentic, accurate, outside source of information to which we have access? It is what? 
Why don't you say it like Texans would say it? Say, the Bible. Say it with me. (laughs) The Bible. Okay. We have an accurate, reliable source. But the question is what? How do you, what do you mean by good? How do you know what is good? How do you determine what is good? Let's see what he says, shall we? Well, the question would then be, how do you determine what is good? We all do that individually. We all, uh, it's it's situation ethics. Uh, The Christian conservative would not uh, accede to that kind of a uh, statement, but we as humanists would, that it's, it's a situation. It, it's determined by, uh, by the situation itself what is right or wrong about that for me. It's up to the, dependent upon the, he's not going to say that what Hitler did to the Jews is right, is he? Let's find out. But then I'd have to ask you the question that you've been hit with before, I'm sure, and that is... Are you, you're not going to say that Hitler was right in what he did to the Jews, would you? No, absolutely not. Whoa! What is the key word there? Absolutely, but he's already told me that he is a humanist, and a humanist denies there are such things as? How do you know? Everybody try it with me. How do you know? How do you know that Hitler was wrong? How do you know Timothy McVeigh was wrong? How do you know those terrorists were wrong? How do you know? Let's see what he says, shall we? What's your standard then? Because you just told me that it's what the individual determines is right or wrong. And Hitler determined, or Charlie Manson determined, it was right to kill somebody. Right. How, do you, how are you going to respond to that action? Uh, there are, I, I don't want to say that there are universal, that there's a universal ethic. No, we wouldn't want to say uh, that now, would we? In human society, and humanists believe that we are responsible for ourselves and our community. In human society, there are certain things that are right. Uh, we don't, uh, the commandment itself, we don't kill our neighbor. Whoa! To what did he just refer? The Bible. Everybody say it with me. The Bible. And yet he's already told me that he is a what? Humanist. And a humanist denies that there's anything that's supernatural. And yet the Bible claims to be the supernaturally revealed word of God. You know what this man's doing? He's stealing lumber from my worldview to build his. And stealing (laughs) is a no-no, unless, of course, you happen to be a... Then it doesn't really matter after all, does it? Let's find out what else he says, shall we? Uh, We don't try to destroy uh, human life. Uh, Some of us have a real question about capital... Punishment, for example, and not abortion. Hitler was wrong. Genocide is wrong, no matter where, where it comes from. Genocide is wrong, no matter where it comes from. What do you mean by genocide? Well, genocide is a killing of an entire group or so-called race of people. By the way, once again, how many races are there? One. It's called what? Human. But he says genocide is wrong, no matter where it comes from. How do you know? How many of you have heard a woman has a right to control her own body? How many have heard that? Okay. What do you mean by her own body? Well, the argument is that the the child in the woman's body is much like the key on the piano keyboard, right? It's part of the piano. Well, if that's the case, then, wow, a woman has four arms, four legs, Two heads. And if it's a male child, a very serious problem. (laughs) You see how stupid that statement is? Simply by asking the question, what do you mean by? You can dismantle arguments just by asking questions. You don't have to argue. You just get wide-eyed and innocent and say what? 
I don't understand. What do you mean by evolution? What do you mean by fact? Excuse me, what do you mean by the Big Bang? And then, excuse me, but how do you know? Well, let's see what happens, shall we? Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to stop there because, the, again, the question would be, how do you know that genocide is wrong? How do you know that murder is wrong? How do you know that Charlie Manson or Hitler or anybody is wrong? Because what you've got is you have set up, if I'm not mistaken, a universal absolute. Are there absolutes? If there was an absolute, it would be the responsibility we have to each other and to our community. And that would, of course, uh, mean that to kill is wrong. So is it by majority opinion? Or is it a revealed absolute? Or is it innate in every person? What? Now notice, I could have gone back to the killer question, which of course is... How do you know? <laughs> but if you ask that question repeatedly, you appear to be obnoxious. Okay? And if there's anything I do not wish to appear to be... <laughs> Actually, I felt sorry for the guy, so I gave him a multiple guess test. Is it by majority opinion that you know right from wrong? Is it revealed? Or is it innate? Is it born in the person? Now, which one of those three can he not choose as a humanist? Reveal, because he's already told me he's a humanist. Of the other two, born in the person or majority opinion, which one do you think he chose? I would have thought born in the person, but you're exactly correct. He chose majority opinion. You think we can do something with this one? Let's find out, shall we? Well, humanism believes in a democratic ideal. Yeah, we are... We go by a majority, but we would also go against the majority if we felt that that, uh, if the decision of the majority was wrong, and we would accept the civic consequences of that. Wait a minute, we'll go with the majority we think the majority is? We'll go against the majority we think the majority is? How do you know? You constantly have to drive them back to that question because in philosophy, that is the study known as epistemology. The study of how you know anything. How do you know? But we get all concerned about these arguments that they raise in our culture and we say, oh, we better do something. Back the wrecking crane up in here, Joe. We start swinging the wrecking ball. Boom, boom, boom. And their arguments don't even quiver because they're so well reinforce from the inside out. But you don't need wrecking cranes to destroy their arguments. You just use squirt guns. And when the base of the argument gets wet, what happens? It crumbles. You know what the squirt guns are? The four questions. We've got to learn to use them wisely. 